You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, full mouth reconstruction, extreme smile makeovers. According to my first guest, your teeth are never too far gone. It's never too late to have the smile you've always wanted. Uh, with us, we have Dr. Angela Young. Dr. Lee Young, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. Now, uh, before we get into today's topic, for people that don't know your practice, you're also an, an endodontist. Yes, I am. Uh, that does dental implants and full mouth reconstruction. Yes. Who's your typical patient that you see? My typical patients are the everyday patients that have a broken tooth, um, teeth that needs root canals. Um, oftentimes, if the tooth can be safe, we do the root canals and we send the patient back to the general dentist for the crowns. Okay. However, there are a lot of a lot of cases where the tooth can't be saved. So we give the patients the options of removing the tooth and placing a dental implant. Okay. Uh, second group, um, plenty of patients have conventional crown and bridge work, denture work with multiple missing teeth, um, but they don't know their options. We give them all the different options available in implant dentistry today. Third group is a lot of denture wearers. Um, they've been wearing dentures for 20, 30 years, and they don't know the options that are available in implant dentistry. And of okay. course, the fourth group are the, the patients that haven't been to the dentist for a long time, and those are the patients that need a full mouth rehabilit rehabilitation. So your practice is in South San Francisco? Yes. And so you, you do everything right there, and you're big on technology. I'm big on technology. Our whole office is built with the state-of-the-art equipment. We have comb beam uh, CT. We use an intraoral scanner. Uh, traditional methods of taking impression includes all that goopy, gumpy stuff that patients have. Now it's all digital. Is that right? That's right. You have a camera that we go through and we can take impressions for regular crowns, for implant crowns. And like a wand in their mouth kind like of Like a wand in their mouth. And it's all digitized. The, the files get sent to the lab. There, there's no impression material anymore. Now we talked in the green room and you yes. said there's a lot of people that have, are having healthy teeth extracted when you could have saved those teeth. Elaborate on yes, that. Yes, we see different populations. Um, I've seen some patients who have perfectly good teeth and they were advised by different dentists that it needs to come out. And because they want to put in a full mouth all in four case. In okay. case the audience doesn't know what all in four is, it's it's basically a full mouth case that is supported by anywhere from two to six implants. Um, there are many teeth that is safe, that is worth saving, and you don't need to go all in four full mouth. You can save some of your natural teeth and perhaps use implants to restore other missing teeth. We are in the Bay Area, so we see a lot of different uh, communities, a, a very diverse group of population, and. In the South San Francisco area, there's a huge, huge Filipino community. And sure. I see a ton of patients that come in, young, vibrant women in their 20s and 30s, and they're wearing dentures. And I am baffled by why they, the majority of them have dentures. So when I start asking them, they say, well, in, 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 the, in the Philippines, that's what they do. If they have a toothache or if there's any dental issues, they just go and extract it. Just pull out the teeth. Just Is pull that out right? the teeth, yeah, and replace them with dentures. Um, so... Those teeth don't need to be re removed. It can, it can be saved. Is, is it less expensive, obviously, when you're saving teeth, and like in your office? Well, sure, it's less expensive. Implants, is, it's, it costs a little bit more, and there are indications when patients need the implants, but not when there's a perfectly good tooth that you, and just pull out just to pull it out. Okay, so we called this topic today full mouth reconstruction. So what does that mean to you? Like what, let's give a working definition for today. I think full mouth reconstruction will be patients that haven't been seeing the dentist for many years. They have a lot of broken teeth. They can't eat and chew or function anymore. They, they don't go out in public because they're embarrassed by the fact that they don't have any teeth and they need help. Um, they come in, they don't even know where to start. And when they see us, we, we start basically with just a consultation. Briefly interview the patients. What are they looking for? Okay. You know, what are they trying to accomplish? And then from there, if they need a full set of dentition replaced, both upper and lower, we have all the technologies. We have a combi machine that basically give us a blueprint of what their, their upper and lower jaw looks like. And then from there, we can plan. We can plan out whatever the treatment plan that suits the patient on their budget, on what they're trying to accomplish. All that is doable under one house. So you work together, I guess as a specialist, with the general dentist. So if they yes, need crown, do. bridge, or whatever, you work like as a team approach. Yes, we do. So often we coordinate and communicate with the general dentist. If a patient has a, a full mouth reconstruction where 
perhaps some of the teeth can be saved. We start with the uh, treatment planning, of course, and there are some teeth in the mouth that perhaps can be saved for crown and bridges. There are others that need extraction and use implants. We could use implants to support a bridge. We can, we can do a variety of, of, of different options. It just depends on the, the case. So who is the typical patient that's coming in with, with, like, I mean, do they come to you like in a mess? Like where they're breaking <laughs> down teeth or bleeding gums or just all the symptoms and they don't know where they stand? Some do, some do, but there are a lot of patients under the, the, the care of a dentist. So they may need something minor, like a single tooth. Again, there might be some that have a, a, a broken bridge. So therefore they may need multiple implants. Um, there are a lot of denture wearers who can't wear their dentures anymore. And what the denture wearers don't know is there are m many, many options in implant dentistry that can help them either stabilize their denture or completely get rid of their dentures. Now you say you see transformations every week in your practice. That means you fix their smile, every do one of these day. full mouth reconstructions, yes. and all of a sudden their life changes. Yes, yes. Give me an example. Well, when patients don't have teeth, they adapt to a new normal. And so what is not talked about is a lot of patients, psychologically, they're embarrassed. Okay, they feel like they're disfigured. They, there's an aesthetics issue, so, and they feel unattractive. So they tend to, behaviorally, they, change, they, they stop showing up for parties, they don't go socialize with their friends, and so it becomes a real inhibition. So when you give them their smile back, their teeth, now they can function, that you, 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 it's, you take away their inhibition. It is, you're liberating them from all the, the, the psychological and sociological changes that they have made. I have this one patient who has four missing teeth, young, vibrant Filipino women in her 30s. So we gave her teeth back, and all of a sudden she's dating again, she's getting a new job, she's vacationing with her, with her boyfriend, and she's getting her life back. So have another patient, uh, a woman in her 50s, and she has a lot of broken teeth, old crown and bridge work is uh, falling apart, we reconstructed her whole mouth, and she's a big time uh, banker at Wells Fargo. So now she's <laughs> Miss CEO. She's going on vacations with her husband. She's back. She now she can attend all her meetings. She's traveling around the world. She's vacationing with her husband, and she's having a good time with her grandkids. Um, back when I first met her, she can't eat anything. She had no teeth. So now she she's enjoying all the foods that she wants. Her main thing is uh, carrots and nuts and so forth, all the hard stuff that she claims that she can never eat before, and now she's eating it. Okay, good. Now, as an endodontist, so, so you do root canals. I do root canals, um, yes. So you are sent, I guess the general dentist send you people yes. to save teeth. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And our, our plan is always to try to save teeth, unless this is not savable. If somebody's missing one tooth, why a dental implant for just a single tooth Absolutely. over a bridge? Well, I mean, if there's one missing tooth, you could replace that one tooth. If you were to replace this with conventional dentistry, you have to cut down two good teeth. And when you cut down two good teeth, the, the bridge is married to each other. So in the future, if there's another problem with, that, with the tooth, then you lose the whole bridge. Oftentimes also when you, when you cut the tooth down for a, a, a crown prep or a bridge preparation, a lot of times you end up eating root canals. So then you, you end up doing more work. Um, Bridges are hard to clean. You can't floss like a, like normal two teeth. You have to floss underneath the, the fake tooth. In implants, you don't you don't have th those issues. You can floss normally. You could function normally, and overall, the cost is not that much different. So, in the long run, do you think the implant might even be less expensive? In the long run, because you just do it once. You right? just do it once, and in the long run, it's actually cheaper because there's less maintenance issues. Whereas in the bridge, you have the potential of decay happening under the crown. You may end up needing a root canal. Again, in the future, if you end up having a crack or a fracture in the root, you, you end up losing the whole tooth and the whole bridge. So for one tooth, just always, like if somebody in your family was missing just one tooth, would you always give a dental I, implant? I routinely do. I have given both, both my parents and my siblings implants every time they lose a tooth. I, I don't do bridges anymore. So take me through the process. If, if somebody comes in, they've been to the dentist in maybe five or 10 or 15 years. Yes. Um, they come in, what's that first appointment like? Well, most of the time the patients are afraid. They don't know what to expect. Uh, we, we take x-rays, uh, cone beam if necessary, 
we walk them through the process. If they need a tooth replacement, we go through the whole treatment plan very extensively. So by the time the patient leaves the office, they know exactly what they're getting into. It take, it, once they know what the, the procedure is about, it really allays the fears that they have. Okay. So how old can you be to get a full mouth reconstruction? Randy, there's no age limitation to how old you, you can be to get a full mouth. I have treated patients in their 90s. 90 years old? 90s. So I, I've placed an implant on a 98-year-old woman. Now, when she first came in, it was a broken tooth, and it really isn't worth saving. She, she, so my game... So she came in for a root canal. She came in for a root canal. It was really broken down, and it wasn't a tooth worth saving. So I recommended extraction, and that was about it. But the patient actually asked me, whether she can get an implant. And I told her, I said, you have a full set of teeth. Why would you need it? If you have one missing tooth, why would you want to put an implant in? And what she told me was like, hey, I still have to eat every day, don't I? <laughs> so, so she's right. So at the end of the day, you know, she, she's a pretty healthy 98-year-old woman. And really, I mean, I took the tooth out, put the implant in on the same day, grafted, sutured, done. And she came back a few months later. We put the, the final crown in and she's happy as a bird. I have another gentleman in his 70s. He's been living with dentures for the past 20 years. He had four other teeth that needs to come out. And for sure he thought he was just gonna convert to a full denture. Now his complaints to me was also he can't eat, he doesn't go out too much just because he's so embarrassed at the fact that his dentures are loose and he's afraid that it will just fall out when he's in the restaurants. When I saw him, true, the teeth needs to come out, but I gave him a full mouth reconstruction where he has okay. teeth again. All right. So now all of a sudden, his wife emails me and he said, you know what, every time he passes by the mirror, he can't help himself but look at himself in the mirror. <laughs> so they're going out more, they're, they're eating at restaurants now, where, whereas before he didn't want to go. Nice. And yeah, and he's traveling and vacationing in different places that in the past that he doesn't want to go. So is the main thing people are just afraid of the dentist? So they put it off and put it off and put it off? I, I think they are. And I, I, I think they just don't know what are the options that are available to them. Nowadays, it can be done quickly and easily and not with a whole lot of discomfort or pain that they think that they will be in. Now you offer sedation. I do. Right? What are the different levels of sedation? It could be something as simple as a pill, oral sedation. It could be nitrous. And if patient really needs to be put to sleep, we can do that as well. So most people just need to be numbed? They don't need sedation? No, not really. I mean, most of the patients that come in for any major surgeries, they are just really under local anesthesia. Okay. And the, the, the numbness goes away within a few hours and they're back to normal. And we are short on time, but you said your passion is women, young women. Are there that I, many young I, women I, that are missing a lot of teeth or I, bad teeth? I don't believe in people, ha I, here, we're in 2018, okay? okay. There, I, I don't really, believe that anybody should be dentulous or toothless. So for the, for the patients that really don't need to remove the teeth, I'm passionate about them not doing so. And not, it, not having teeth extracted. Not having teeth extracted. However, but if they, at this stage, if they have teeth that are extracted, then I want to replace it for them. Okay. So, because he, here's the, the, here are the facts. If somebody who is young and vibrant and they have no teeth. You know what that does to them. Psychologically, they just don't feel like they're attractive. They lose their self-confidence. They start, they just don't do the things that normal people do. So simple things like going to, to parties and weddings and showing up for a movie, going out dating, um, you know, socializing with your friends, just simple things as just eating in a restaurant because all they're concerned about is, oh my God, what if somebody knows that my denture might fall out or get food gets stuck underneath and I can't clean it. They're so self-conscious. So what I see a lot is these people tend not like to- Like young do patients. Absolutely. These are the people that, what, <laughs> they don't do the normal things that normal people do at their age. And just because of this, what I call disability, and that doesn't have to happen because there are plenty of things that we can do to give them their teeth and their smile back, okay? So once you get it back, I see all sorts of transformations. Really? Yes, now all of a sudden, they're dating, they're eating, they're going to a friend's house, they're going to parties, they're going on vacations, and those are the things that we like to hear. Now, with the seniors, that's another one of my passion. Mm -hmm. Again, I volunteer a lot and I do a lot of educational uh, seminars with, with the, the seniors because th th that is the group that are the forgotten group. And so when I go into these places, I, just about 60, 70% of them have dentures. And when I talk to them, and they don't use it. They, they don't use their dentures. It typically stays in their drawers. 
And why? I mean, seniors need to eat on a daily basis as well. Now, maybe the social aspect isn't quite as important to, to some seniors, but I beg to differ because when you, when you get into the senior centers, there are plenty of people all the time. And the ones that are, that, that are indentures, the ones that don't wear them, are the ones that typically stay in their rooms. Now, these full mouth reconstructions, Medicare, Medicaid, and even the best insurance doesn't cover they don't the whole cover. procedure. But you have financing. Are people financing Absolutely. This? Absolutely. We help them in in-house financing. If they need an extended payment period, there are outside financing companies that work with dentists and dental patients specifically. Um, so these lenders lend on dental procedures? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, more often, I see family members helping uh, their parents pay for their costs. Kids paying for the parents? Absolutely. And, and the other way around? And the other way around. So they pitch in? and help out or pay for the whole thing. They, yeah, yeah. Um, I have an 84 year old woman who can't eat or chew and the daughter obviously want the best for her mother. So she came with her at the appointment. We discussed all the options and patient decided to get her teeth done and a daughter paid for the mother. So now that she has her teeth, She's out there. She 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 gave me a specific deadline because she needs oh, she to. Did? A yes, deadline. Yes, because she her main goal is to go to her grandson's graduation. So, nice. <laughs> so I I make sure that I have the, the everything done beforehand, and she, now she's she's off, and she sent me photos of uh, of her when she was at her son, grandson's graduation. Um, she had reported to me, as well as as this daughter, that she can eat and and, and chew all the foods that she wants. Like what? Oh, she likes bread. She likes uh, carrots. She likes almonds. So, <laughs> and she's eating it all. So even if before they couldn't eat it all with the new teeth or the, the, the full mouth reconstruction, they could eat and chew whatever they want. They can like eat. Like pizza chewing or They can eat everything. Broccoli. Everything. You can buy the carrot with your front teeth. Buy the carrot with the front teeth. Okay. Now, you know, I, I told you, in 19 years of the Wellness Hour airing on television all over the U.S. and Canada, you're our first endodontist. And I thought, at least I thought, I thought this would be appropriate to have an endodontist that saves teeth all day long doing root canals to come in here and talk about saving teeth. Because but, but I do do that. All so day you long. save teeth all the time. I save teeth all day long. So people that think they need an extraction, maybe they were told by their general dentist, you need. Well, I mean, if you in 25 years, you're going to have all yeah. different scenarios. But when you say, how do I get excited about saving teeth? I really, it's it's like, how do I even make a story that says, oh my God, the, the patient was, it doesn't even sound right. The patient's able to save their teeth. Because the truth is, when the patients come in, they usually don't even want to be there. Okay? And, and that's no different than, than doing surgeries, quite honestly. So we're not getting, the, like, the, the general doctors right they get them when they get all the hugs and kisses because by the time <laughs> by the time right. they see them oh my god you know they have their teeth right i'm just you know part of the stepping stone for them to get what they want so for for the for the transformation once those the, the full mouth cases are for sure okay we do see those because in, in our neck of the woods at least there's a lot of dentists that don't know how to restore okay seriously they don't know how to do the the, the all on fours none of that stuff so that's where the training comes so back in. to the single tooth implant Okay. Um, what's that process like and, and what's the discomfort like or downtime? Okay. okay, so oftentimes when the patient needs implants, they come in with a broken tooth. So they get numbed, we take the tooth out, we can literally put the implant in on the same day, get sutured up, and the patient leaves just fine. Rarely do they hurt. There are some, but we, we usually cover them with painkillers and antibiotics, of course, and they heal really just fine uneventfully. Now, what if you don't have enough bone? Because I guess if you've been missing teeth for quite some time, yes, you yes. may not have enough bone. Yes, and for those patients... Like that, in a single tooth situation. Sure. So when we take the tooth out and let's say the site doesn't have enough bone, then we do some bone grafting. And then the patient will have to come back three, four months later. Once the bone comes back, then we can put the implant in at that time. Now in your practice, free consultation, like if somebody's watching this and really they don't know their situation. Yes. Maybe they haven't been to the dentist in 10 years. We or offer complimentary consults. The idea is if the patient needs help, we want to help them. So if they come in, we need to explain to them what, what is the necessary procedures that they need. And they don't have to leave their general dentist. That means if they're watching this, they have a dentist they like, they could go to you to fill in that one tooth. Yes, absolutely. And then they go back to their regular dentist absolutely. to get the cleanings and everything else. Absolutely. And we work with the local dentist all the time. But if somebody's been told, you're t we can't save your tooth, 
and they've just talked to a general dentist. And, and I know you work with general dentists, but yes. do you think they owe it to themselves to at least see an endodontist to get a second opinion to save that tooth? Absolutely. And in most cases, the tooth can be saved. Is that right? Absolutely. So there's a lot of extractions going on out there that you could have saved their teeth, do you think? I absolutely believe that, Randy. <laughs> okay. So good. So when they go in, and sometimes I guess, it, well, in a way, what I'm picking up on is that if, if you're going to miss, you're about to lose one tooth, might as well go to an endodontist that also does a dental implant or yes. at least knows how to do it. So basically, so you we're, get the real info. We, yes, we are a one stop shop. If, and this is where I pride myself because being an endodontist that does implants from single tooth to full mouth, we're in the best position because we're not biased. We're in the best position to tell you can the tooth be saved? And if the tooth can be saved, we'll save it. If the tooth can't be saved, we don't want you to spend money on procedures that's not going to work anyway. So you might as well invest that into a procedure that will give you the most predictable results. Is that right? And it's less money in the long run to get a single tooth implant over a traditional bridge. It is less money in the long run, less complications, less procedures later. Now there are maintenance protocols, no doubt, like any dental procedures, but far easier than a uh, bridge. Now, is this true that most people, that first tooth they lose is in the back? So if you're only missing one of your back, what do they call it, molars? Molars. And it's not showing, why, why even replace it with a dental implant? Because, Fair question. Be, because, because it's not just an aesthetics issue, okay? There is function. If you take a tooth out, the following things can happen. The teeth will start shifting on you. The, both your top teeth will, sh will usually come down, and the, the teeth adjacent to it will start moving towards the, the, the empty space. Okay. When you take a tooth out, you, the, the bone naturally shrinks. And when the bone shrinks, the gum will shrink. And then all of a sudden, the whole, there's a big defect in, in the area. And let's say you decide later on, let's say six months, a year, two years, finally you get around to it and you say, okay, well, let's, let's get an implant then. Well, at that time, it's not as simple because the, the, the bone is already set and now you have to do some additional expensive procedures, bone grafting procedures, just to build a bone up in order for you to get the implant. So if you're missing like a tooth in the back, you're obviously chewing on the other side. You is there a problem with that too? You, sure, you favor the other side. The, you, you, those are the patients that tend to crack their teeth more. There's other teeth will start breaking. Your, your jaw starts to shift a, 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 in, in a different direction. It creates other dental problems that is totally unnecessary and preventable. So most patients that come in and they're only, and let's say they're coming to you for a root canal, but yes. you see them missing teeth in the back. Do I, you try to tell them, hey, you better fix that? I, I typically recommend that they should replace a tooth. I don't care how they do it, whether it's through conventional treatment or whether an implant, but they, they need to replace their teeth. But they're afraid, but most of them say no. Surpri like they say, oh, I'm okay. No, surprisingly, a lot okay. of people do. A lot of people do, but I think what it is is they haven't been fully informed or educated about it. So they're Because they're gonna lose all their teeth if they, if they just allow the empty holes in the back to go into another tooth and another tooth. Yeah, it is there truth to that? It takes time, it doesn't happen overnight. But it's a snowball. In it, a way. It's a snowball effect, and the timeline obviously varies with each patient. Okay, so go to an endodontist. Go to an if, endodontist if you think you're going to lose a tooth. <laughs> right. And the endodontist also that does <laughs> that understands or uh, does the surgical part of single implant dentistry. Yes. Is that right? Yes, Randy. And you're able to do it in one day. I could do it in one day. Now, on that single tooth, let's say you did it in the back. How soon can they eat? Well, we typically recommend the patient to stay on a soft diet just because they just had a surgery, but you know, they could go back to eating their normal foods within weeks. So insurance covers like a single tooth dental implant? Yes, And absolutely. it also covers a root canal? And it covers a root canal. So some insurance, I, I guess it just depends on your maximum payout. Yeah, and, and some will pay more, some will pay less, but in most cases, implants now is the standard in the industry, so most insurance do cover it. Is that right? And so you have somebody in your office that like will bill their insurance or give them all the documentation necessary to give to their insurance? How does it work? As a service to our patients, we do the, the dental building for them. Okay. So patients don't have to worry about all the paperwork. We okay. do it all. So if somebody's missing one tooth or a couple teeth, yes. get a dental implant. Yes, Randy. That's your belief. That's my belief. And go to somebody that also does root canals. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, do you have, I mean, are, are patients more, because of the internet, people, I guess, are more savvy. They're Googling things. Are you getting people that are going now to multiple dentists before they go to you for like quotes? It's fairly common that people say that to us. But a, a lot of patients do find us online and they come to us because of our qualifications. Okay. The, the, the fact that we've done thousands and thousands of these cases. So they want some, usually our implant patients, they want somebody that they trust 
that they like and they know that would, they, they would do a good job for them. Okay, and save teeth if possible. And save teeth as possible. Have you ever had a general dentist send you a patient for an extraction and you were able to call the dentist and say, hey, actually, we can All save that All the time, tooth. Randy. Really? All the time. So again, back to our belief, if you can save a tooth, as an endodontist speaking, you save the tooth. You can do nothing, that, there's nothing in dentistry that you can do to beat mother nature. Like if you can't save the tooth, then go to the next best procedure, which is a single tooth implant. Single tooth implant. And, and if you are going to extract a tooth, it's because there's no way you could save it. That, your, absolutely. Right, as an end of the Yes. Dollar. And if I can save it, there's, I do everything in my power to save the tooth. Okay, good. Now, we are completely out of time. Final yeah. message. Somebody watching this. Okay. Maybe their mouth is falling apart. Maybe they can't <laughs> eat or chew. But what, for whatever reason, they're putting it off and putting it off. Maybe yes. they're just missing one tooth. Yes. What's your message to them? If you have a dental issue, come to the dentist as soon as possible. Okay. okay, get the information, get the facts, and get the right answers that pertains to you, and then make a decision. Don't just put it off, because the longer you, you postpone your treatment, the more costly it will be, and the, the less predictable is the outcome. Okay, good. Dr. Lee Young, I want to thank you for coming on the program. Thank you. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.